So welcome to today's webinar. My name is Matthew McKnight. I'm a technical specialist at Autodesk working from our Melbourne office. Uh, today's topic is what's new in Autodesk Nastran in CAD 2017. Let's have a quick look at the agenda for the day. Get it up on the screen. Uh, we'll step through talking about some of the new functionality, and this is going to include new functionality from the 2017 release, but also as part of the SAP release that came out around uh, the middle of the 2016 release, um, which is called the, the SAP release or Subscription Advantage Pack. Uh, and we'll be touching on a number of topics in the key areas of ease of use, interoperability, and then results evaluation. And at the end of the, the uh, webinar, we'll step through some ways that you can engage with the community uh, to get further information about the topics that we'll cover today. But let's get stuck straight into the content and have a quick look at uh, some of the new features. Uh, firstly, focusing on ease of use, and I will uh, just highlight them in a slide presentation to begin with, but then we'll step through some practical um, examples of uh, each of these uh, you know, in the software itself. Uh, in particular, I want to highlight a number of key changes. Firstly, around the application of loads in instances where you would like to apply loads, especially uh, in locations where you've got to define them in relation to a point. Uh, that may not exist in relation to the, the model geometry itself, but there may be a vertex or a point that's available for you to apply the load. A good example of this is a remote force where you know the load of a component that's not necessarily modelled, where you have information about maybe the centre of gravity of a part and the mounting point to which the component is mounted to. Uh, well, now you've got the ability to be able to apply that remote force to a coordinate system uh, that's referenced off uh, uh, any of the components within inside of the uh, assembly that you're working on. And the ability to be able to see those coordinate systems, so the display of the coordinate systems, has been improved. And we'll see that by switching through the coordinate systems, I can actively understand which coordinate system that I am choosing or selecting, and, uh, and understand the orientation of that coordinate system to understand X, Y, and Z uh, axes uh, to give me some relevance to the, to the loads uh, that I'm applying. Uh, also, the addition of um, uh, you know some new ways to apply loads. So in this case, we now have the ability to be able to apply bearing loads, which was uh, added uh, to the load application area, and also the way that we can apply a rigid point at the centre of geometry. Previously, you would have to have inserted a point at the centre of geometry prior to. Uh, putting in place a rigid body connection. Uh, in this instance, though, the development team have added functionality that enables you to select a face and have the point automatically inserted and then the rigid connectors aligned to that point uh, in, in the one, uh, one process, So, which makes that, uh, that process significantly easier. And then finally, if we look at the, the way that you can um, specify the loads, that's been changed as well. So whether you're working in uh, imperial or metric units, you can mix and match. So you, if you're working on a, a model that's imperial, that you would like to input uh, metric uh, magnitude, uh, so MPA, then you can do that, or vice versa. And likewise, when it comes to using math with inside of the dialog boxes, you can. So if you wanted to put 100 PSI times 6, then you could put 100 times 6 PSI and it would automatically convert not only the math equation for you but the, um, but the units as well that you're using. And then when we look at the, um, you know, the way that uh, the dialog boxes and uh, in particular the model tree and then the ribbon toolbar across the top of the screen are shown, you'll see that there's some changes that bring a lot of the icons in alignment with uh, the inventor uh, user um, a dialog interface, but you'll also find that there's been some consolidation of the, the icons and the information that's contained with inside those areas as well. And we'll show you that a little bit more specifically as well. 
Also, you'll find that representations that you've set up with inside your inventor models, whether they be design views or maybe level of detail, you can now choose to use those with inside of the NAS trained NCAT environment. So if you've got a large assembly that you're really, really only wanting to run specific analysis on a particular area of your design, then maybe you could use level of detail to you know, narrow down the selection of components that you want to run your analysis on. And then, uh, you know, secondly, you can exclude parts from your analysis. So previously, if you chose not to uh, mesh a, a body, then you would exclude it, but you can physically exclude that from and then even visually hide the component from view so that it cannot be seen. So <clears throat> let's have a look. Let's jump straight into Inventor and have a look at this in action. So here we are inside of Inventor. I've got a simple model. And inside this model, we have some representation set up. I have a simulation webinar level of detail defined, which just hides some of the components that I don't necessarily need for my analysis. Um, so I can go in here into my NASTRAN NCAT environment. <clears throat> and as we already know, the, uh, the analysis already comes with, uh, the, the, it, when you switch into the NASTRAN NCAT environment, you already come with one analysis already set up by default. But we can edit that analysis, as I've done here, just by right-clicking it, saying edit. And you'll note here that one of the tabs that's been added is called the model state. And this is where we can go and choose either the design view or level of detail. So maybe I want to choose the simulation webinar level of detail. And you can see here that we've now, you know, reflecting the, the, um, the setup that we had inside of the model environment, we've now narrowed down the selection of components that we'll be analysing with inside of the simulation environment as well. Furthermore, though, if you wanted to make changes to that, then you could. So you can see here that if I right-click individual components within inside of, of this analysis, I can, one, change the visibility, which just hides it from view, but I can also exclude, the analysis, exclude that component or body from the analysis as well. So I can individually go through and exclude those components that I don't necessarily want as part of the analysis. Now, the reason why I've removed the tubes is because I'm going to replace those with an idealization. We're going to re represent those with what are called connectors. And the connectors, uh, one thing, it's not available on the ribbon toolbar, but you can access them down in the, in the model environment in the, uh, the model tree. So if you right click and say new inside this dialog box, you can see here there's a number of different types of connectors that I can use from rods, cables, springs, rigid bodies, or bolts. Now, the one that I want to show to you, or there's a couple I'll show you to you today, but the one I want to start with is the rigid body option. And an option that we spoke of a little earlier is the ability to be able to apply a point at the center. So in essence, what we want to do is apply a rigid body connection between this face and a point that's located at the center of that face. So if I click on that face, you'll find that it adds all of those rigid connectors back to that central point for us. And I can duplicate that one there and then create a version of it in the other four instances that we have. So I'm just going to quickly step through the creation of those four instances. And we now have those in place. <clears throat> Furthermore, if we wanted to then connect all of those, and you can see we've got those rigid connectors going back to a, like in a spider link going back to the central point, we can add another connector. And I'm just going to create a new one. We'll create a spring. We'll choose where we want the spring to go from. It's going to go from this point to that point. We'll give it a stiffness, 1e e to the 9, 1,000. 1e e to the 9, so these are just some arbitrary numbers that we use. And then <coughs> we'll add a second one. You can see here that I can add a second spring, which will run from here to there, and we can hit OK. So what we've done, in essence, is we've simplified the model by idealizing, by removing the geometry and replacing the geometry with 
a connector that's going to represent the way that those components interact or are represented in the real part. <clears throat> so this will significantly simplify the analysis in many instances, make it run faster, whilst at the same time, as long as you've represented the components uh, close to the um, components that you've been representing, will give you uh, reasonably accurate results in, in place of them. Uh, what else can we do? Okay, so if we wanted to apply a load, another feature we talked about is the ability to be able to use coordinate systems from individual components. So here we want to apply a, a remote force. Here. So maybe we know the force applied from the handlebar is located somewhere out in space, uh, but we don't have the geometry maybe for the head stem and the handlebar, uh, but uh, we can represent that. So in this instance, what we're going to do is use a remote load or remote force to apply that. So the uh, in this case what we need to choose is we're going to choose the head tube as the coordinate systems coordinate system to then help us define the location of where that force is going to be. <clears throat> we'll apply the force on the top face of the part. We could split that face if we wanted to and then apply it around the face uh, around the uh, the outside diameter of the tube itself, but in this instance we'll just apply it to the end face. We'll give a value for the uh, the load, and in this case I'm going to put a thousand pound force. We'll choose to put the location of the force uh, based on the coordinate system, and this coordinate system is related to the coordinate system that we've selected here, which is the, the head tube coordinate system. And then we simply define the location relative to that. So we're going to use 0, use 750, and we'll use 250. Turn it on so that we can see its location. You can see now out in space we have this remote force or remote load, and it's going to be applied in the direction that's shown there at that location back onto the face that we've selected in this instance here or numerous, instance, in numerous faces that we've selected there if there was more than one. Otherwise, we can go, OK, we've now set up our analysis to, to, uh, to run. So hopefully that gives you a good idea as to some of those changes. Like I said, you know, the way that we can apply connectors, the way that we can work with model states, uh, the way that we can apply loads based on uh, coordinate systems and, uh, and the likes. So, and, and also how you can apply um, different types of unit systems, mismatched unit systems no matter which um, unit system is defined with inside of the analysis setup that you've got. So let's quickly go back to our analysis and we'll run through some of the other um, changes that have taken place. Okay, so when it comes to interoperability, uh, there's been a number of um, enhancements in this area as well. So one of the first things you're going to notice if you've if you've come from the 2016 version to the 2017 version, you'll see that the physical um, properties area has been changed and is now being represented as what are called idealizations. So within inside of each of our analysis studies, we have an idealization section that is going to represent the way that we're representing our geometry. We're in the form of solid shells and beams uh, and the types of loads, connectors, restraints, contacts, materials, uh, mesh information that we're using, all of this information is stored within the idealization, making it a little bit more logical, uh, especially if you're a new user to NASTRAN in CAD, but also if uh, you're a new user to simulation in general. Uh, let's uh, jump into the demonstration, have a quick look at the way that we handle idealization inside of NASTRAN. So here we're working with a simple frame uh, assembly. You can see here there's nothing overly complex about this. Now in the 2016 release, if you are working with NASTRAN in CAD, inside of Inventor, frames um, would have had to have been predominantly manually specified, so there was no automation of frame re recognition. Uh, but inside of NAS Training CAD 2017, we now have the ability to be able to automatically recognize all of the frame segments. And you can see here that just by switching inside of the NAS Training CAD environment, it's idealized those 
and is now representing each of those as beams. So you can see under the idealization section inside the analysis study that we have set up, there's a number of beams that have been defined in here. Um, and if I edit, say, the first beam that's been used, you can see the location of that beam is over here. That's the 3D geometry that the idealization, the beam element is representing. You can see here the type of element that's been used. So rather than being a solid element, we're using a line element. We're using a bar uh, line element type here. We could use beam or pipe if we wanted to. You can see the material that's being used here. And if we wanted to, we can go and change the material by clicking on new material or choosing any other material that may have already been set up within the study. We can change the mesh color here. But you'll also see that we have the selected entities is shown as that segment of our uh, structure. And if I click on view properties, it brings up a dialog box that shows us the section information of the component that it's representing. What I really like about the, uh, this aspect of uh, NASTRAN in CAD 2017 is the ability for you to quickly and easily then change the representation of that, um, that structural member. So though it's, it's defined here as represented based on the structural member created inside of the Inventor uh, frame generator, if I wanted to, maybe I'd run the analysis and the section didn't meet the requirements of the design, I could go in here and change the cross-sectional property of the part. I could go in here and physically choose, you know, uh, maybe a bit of channel and then define parameters or, or dimensions of that channel hit OK, in which case then it would represent that segment based on this cross-sectional. I could also go in and input the property input as well. So if I had the information on hand, then I could put that in there which would represent it. So it's very powerful in the ability to be able to quickly and easily move through various different section sizes uh, without the need to go back to the CAD model and make those changes with inside of the model environment then come back into the, to the, um, the simulation environment and update your simulation studies. So very powerful in that respect. Let's apply uh, a, a couple of things. Firstly, a load. I'll apply a gravity load on to this part. We are going to run gravity, where you can see we're set up for meters per second squared. Uh, not it's 9.81. I'm going to times it by 6 to highlight the way that we can now run math calculations inside the dialog box. And if you turn on that option there, you can see the direction of the load. And if we want to, we can edit the load and you'll see that the calculation has been conducted for us. So we don't have to um, manually have to do that and then you put it into the dialog box. Furthermore, let's add a constraint. I'm just going to add a quick fixed constraint to that uh, member and that member. We turn it on so we can see their location. So you can see them there and then go OK. Otherwise, I'm simply going to hit run and run this study. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that in the 2016 release, you had to run your mesh um, prior to running the analysis. In this case, uh, 2017 has uh, been updated. So it, uh, it automatically recognizes that mesh hasn't been created, runs the mesh, and then runs the, uh, the, the analysis afterwards. Okay, so we've quickly run that analysis. It runs very quickly because we've got beam uh, representations of our components. And the thing that I want to highlight to you now is the way that we can view our results. So in the 2016 version, you would move in and you would edit and, you know, you could display and look at your results. Uh, and, and if you wanted to cycle through different results in this environment, you would come in and look at displacements maybe uh, and adjust the parameters inside this dialog box area. But the good thing about the changes with 2017 is that you'll find that if we exit this, notice that when you display the results, so if I do it on the displacement plot, you'll see here that we get our color um, chart that we would expect, but up the top here we get this little mini toolbar, and the mini toolbar gives us the ability to be able to very quickly and very easily switch between result types. So if I wanted to look at stress, I can just transition to stress. I can look at bar stress. I can look at, um, you know, along the beam at various endpoints of the beam. I can change from pascals to megapascals to PSI. If I wanted to, I can go in and change the color plot 
from continuous to maybe fringed, uh, to the number of graduations along the colour plot, uh, to the even to grayscale or colour itself. So there's a range of things that I can do. So this is very good because it means that I can very quickly and easily interrogate the, uh, the model and look for maybe displacements in a certain direction in millimetres uh, without having to go through the dialog box and find the specific settings that I'm looking for. So the user interface associated with interrogating the results has been improved in that respect. As has been a couple of other areas and they are uh, the ability for you to be able to use probes. Uh, uh, probes have been enhanced so you're previously able to use probes but you can now add numerous probes to your model. <clears throat> and you can also move those probes around. So as you're moving the geometry around, maybe you're finding that they're overlapping with, um, you know, geometry or with one another. So you can move those around. And you can also delete probes as well. So if you want to, you can remove those. And one of the final things I'll show you today is the ability to be able to change object visibility. So if I want to, I can come in here and I can turn off constraints or I can turn off loads, or I can turn off mid surfaces, or you know, all the ANC. So the ability for me to quickly and easily come in here and turn on or off the visibility of certain aspects of my analysis means that I can you know, interrogate my results, understand what's going on a little bit easier uh, through the use of that visibility and display. So again, a, a lot of fine tuning of the workflow, making it a little easier for you to to, to uh, work with inside of the simulation environment. But I think a lot of enhancements that really do make uh, running mass training CAD and working inside this environment, this environment uh, uh, are better than in, in previous releases. So let's go back to our uh, presentation, step through the last few slides. So <clears throat> we talked a little bit about resu results evaluation. Uh, I will point out that a lot of these things we've already shown you, so you know, the mini toolbar, um, the enhanced plot dialog, the changes that have been made to probe where you can anchor and delete those. Uh, the fatigue plot has been switched around, so when we talk about the fatigue plot switch, we're actually talking about the colour gradient of the fatigue plot. So previously the colour gradient was uh, red for high fatigue life, blue for low fatigue life. Uh, well, that's been switched around. So red now indicates low fatigue life and blue indicates high fatigue life. Um, you can also see another a number of other changes there that have been just incremental little improvements that have been made to the way that you can work, work with your results inside uh, the results and post-processing stage of your analysis. So let's finish this up by looking at uh, the community. Um, you will find a number of things. One, uh, a newsletter. If you'd like to uh, receive the uh, simulation newsletter, you can sign up for that by going to Autodesk.com product simulation newsletter. Alternatively, just do a search for Autodesk simulation newsletter and that will send you to the location you need to go. Uh, if you would like to interact with other users of uh, whether it be Nastran InCAD or maybe you're working with Moldflow or CFD or Sim Mechanical, uh, you can go to the simulation forums and interact with users from all around the globe and the development team are often uh, talking to users directly around some of the issues that they have on the forums as well. So it's not only used by users but internal staff as well. And then if you're after the latest information, uh, make sure you keep one eye on the simulation blog where we're putting a lot of information around the changes to the software, um, ways to use the software that you may not have necessarily thought of. Um, but there's some really interesting things happening on the Autodesk simulation blog as well. Otherwise, uh, we'll have a quick look. Let me have a quick look and see whether there's any questions that have come up. Uh, nope, so there was a quick one around the audio. Hopefully everyone has heard me today. There will be a recording of this goes up on YouTube in the next day or two. So if you're looking or you maybe had there was some audio issues, uh, hopefully that will be resolved in the, uh, the YouTube version that will go up in the next 24 to 48 hours. Otherwise, uh, further to this, if you've got any other questions, then feel free to reach out to your local channel partner 
or your reseller. Resellers uh, in Australia, there's a list of them that can be attained by going to autodesk.com.au forward slash resellers. You can find out more information around Nastran NCAD at the autodesk.com website. And if you'd like to follow up with um, some specific questions around Nastran NCAD, feel free to contact me. My name is Matthew McKnight. My email address is up on the screen there. Otherwise, it's a nice quick uh, webinar today. That's how we like them, nice and quick. Um, hopefully you're enjoying good weather wherever you are and uh, hopefully we'll see you at an up and coming webinar. Thanks for your time today. Bye for now.